In the interest of time, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, um, Council Member Kalos, uh, who has some questions. Uh, thank you to the Department of City Planning for studying the issue of mechanical voids and recommending a limit of mechanical space heights of 25 feet every 75 feet. I feel it's a step in the right direction. Uh, as, as you are aware, I testified for a little bit uh, further, and I think that is something that every community board also agreed to and more than ne nearly half a dozen elected officials. Uh, now, what was surprising was that the City Planning Commission ignored your recommendations and your research and actually went the other direction from what everyone was asking for, at least from our side, and went to 30 feet. Uh, do you stand by your recommendation of 25 feet? Uh, would DC or would DCP support the council if we were to amend the proposal back to the 25 feet that you had recommended? We, we would support uh, the city council modification. Uh, the 25 feet uh, was uh, part of our original proposal. The city planning commission did take into consideration input from expert practitioners and, and made the modification, um, but we believe 25 feet uh, would would be would, would be sufficient to accommodate. In in your space. research, did you come across any existing spaces that were exactly 30 feet where that extra five feet was necessary? Um, we did not, but we actually heard a lot of testimony from engineers that actually challenged us to be to future proof this and to look forward a little bit. Um, and they told us to be cognizant of. Uh, coming changes to the energy code um, that would actually put more stringent standards on um, HVAC equipment. Um, and one thing they also noted was to also be cognizant of you know, the Im impending climate change and the need in flood zones to actually elevate large mechanical equipment out of the, sub out of the cellar and subcellar. So with those two kind of things in mind, I think that's really what the, uh, the commission was looking at and the reason for the change. But there's no current buildings with 30 foot mechanics. Not that we have seen in our historic, you know, look backward 10 years. And uh, right now we're looking at 25 feet, which would be generous, but it, we don't necessarily need to future proof everything because legislation is iterative and you could, we could come back and change it if we needed to. Is, is that correct? That's a correct That's statement. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as we considered this donating text, one of the buildings with a 150-foot mechanical void at 249 East 62nd Street, uh, the developer just pulled the sides off their mechanical space. I want to thank you for your commitment today under oath that you will be studying the unenclosed mechanical voids, also known as stilts. Uh, when does the Department of City Planning expect to have the results of this study? It is, again, it would be an exhaustive study, it would be comprehensive, um, and this study that we looked at for enclosed spaces took us a year, over a year. So I think it would be fair to say that a study of the unenclosed spaces would take at least that. Okay, that is, that is helpful to know, at least for our purposes in planning, and whether you're on the preservation side or the development side, at least there's, uh, I think, fair notice. And I guess one thing I would just distinguish is at the municipal building, the, the space there, the archway, uh, the vaults are public spaces with an enhanced subway entrance. At the city group landmark, it is a enhanced public space uh, with an enhanced subway entrance that is open to the general public. It helped preserve a church. There is a mall, but it is all usable by people from the general public who are not tenants of the existing space, and it is usable space that enhances the uh, uh, street streetscape. And I guess I, I mentioned it at the hearing, but I would reiterate: Do you see a difference between uh, s spaces that are created at the ground level that can create an enhanced streetscape, and spaces that are created? now at uh, 249 East 62nd Street, where it is a roof deck, uh, which is not accessible to anyone because it is a mechanical roof deck or, or what have you. Would, is that is fair to distinguish between the two? Sure, absolutely. That's a very... Uh, and I guess the other last question, I appreciate the chair for his indulgence, is just we made a, a lot of recommendations. I think when we first sat down with the study from uh, Friends of the Upper East Side Historic Districts, we were looking at the floor to ceiling heights, we were looking at the mechanical voids, we were looking at 
gerrymandered zoning lots. Uh, uh, also, some of the amenity spaces, we're now going to see buildings being built with 60-foot transparent slides, which I believe are the next set of voids. Why did DCP focus on that one issue, and uh, what about the other issues that we did bring to your attention in terms of future studies on those items? This, the, the practice of mechanical, excessive mechanical voice was something that was emerging and real, and they were seeing it. Um, there were some other uh, issues that were raised, uh, for example, floor to ceiling heights or a zoning lot merger that you raised um, that uh, weren't. Uh, much, much, much more extensive study. The, the definition of zoning lot is a fundamental building block of New York City's zoning resolution. Um, to take a look at a redefin redefinition of that is a massive undertaking. With respect to floor to ceiling heights, um, you know, at New York City, we've never regulated floor to ceiling heights before, and we have taken into consideration that there's a wide variety of floor to ceiling heights. Different buildings have different needs. There's also his historic you know, um, uh, uh, tall floors, we have parlor floors in brownstones. Um, uh, floor to ceiling heights uh, was a matter that we did not believe was appropriate to be regulated by zoning. My, my last question this round is just my, my land use attorneys at the city council have advised that the best way to regulate the shape and form of buildings and development in the city is the zoning code. Uh, one of the things that is happening, and, and I actually do support the legislation in Albany carried by Senator Robert Jackson and Assemblymember Linda Rosenthal, would be for Albany to use the uh, multiple dwelling law to define the heights of the buildings if we can't do it through the zoning process. Uh, is DCP con considering the fact that if we aren't able to do this as a city that Albany might take that power from us? Uh there is a proposed state law, um, and uh, that proposed state law would alter the most basic definition in the city zoning resolution, which is floor area, in a way that effectively caps floor to ceiling heights in new construction at nine to 10 feet and renders thousands and thousands of existing buildings overbuilt. So again, this applies to brownstones and to towers and everything in between. So uh, we at City Planning, we really cannot overstate how blunt and far-reaching and frankly problematic the effects of this of a state bill would be on the city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos. I want to turn it over to Councilmember uh, Rivera for some questions. I'm going to uh, turn it over to Councilmember Kalos for a few questions. I want to thank the uh, zoning chair for his indulgence. He's pointed out there are a number of people waiting, so customarily ask a lot of questions. We're just going to try to do one question per panel. Uh, both uh, Manhattan Borough President, Borough President Gail Brewer's office, Community Board 8, and Save Central Park and others have asked for uh, us to amend further than 25 feet. Uh, I've been advised that the furthest we can get is 25 feet. We can't go to 12 or 15. Do any of you have any uh, anything to support it, whether in the law or in testimony, that would allow us to to be more aggressive and as aggressive as we'd like? Councilmember Kalos, uh, just a clarification: the borough president um, did not uh, comment on the 25 feet that were originally proposed. Um, that um, figure seemed fine to us. Um, we did hear a lot of testimony in support of a 25-foot mechanical floor. Board 8. Um, yes, and uh, thank you, Councilmember Kalos. Um, in our original resolution, which you guys have a copy of, we did ask for, for tightening that, that number, um, but it is my understanding that, that within the scope that, that you guys have, that going back to 25 is as far as it can go. Um, so we thank you if you will move it to 25. And, and C is CBA currently considering a zoning text amendment for 210 feet for affordability? Uh, yes, that, that is under consideration. We're working with uh, our local elected officials and nonprofit advocacy groups in our neighborhood on exploring um, a height cap or down zoning in certain areas of our district where we are seeing uh, exploitation of these sorts of loopholes. Um, so that would be another opportunity that we could have to uh, curb some of these these loopholes. But but right now the the project in front of us is this, and uh, we really thank you for bringing it forward. Thank you to City Planning and uh, the Council. Okay, and thank you to CB7 as well. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you very much for your testimony today. Uh, I would like to call up the next panel, uh, Rachel Levy.